Hi, my name is Maison Fields. I'm here with my colleague, Henrietta Amra. And today we are here with Josh Harden of Pharmacist at Mills Pharmacies. How are you? Doing well. How are y'all? I am doing good. So just to follow up on our last conversation, I just have a couple questions for you. And my first question is, do you guys accept all forms of medical insurance? We accept most forms. It's technically not medical insurance. So a pharmacy's contracts are with um, pharmacy benefit manager companies. Okay. We have contracts with almost all of the major providers uh, with some exceptions here or there. Um, that's actually one of pharmacy's biggest threats is uh, sort of egregious contracts from pharmacy insurance providers. So, <laughs> but to the extent that we can accept the insurances, we, we do our best to try to accommodate everyone. Okay. And then are there any other resources that are available to caregivers at your pharmacy or do you guys accept good RX or any other discount plans? We actually provide our own discount plan. So okay. we try to keep tabs on what's in the market. Uh, it's, it's sort of a little known fact that companies like GoodRx actually just sort of passively collect income from local pharmacies. Uh, they, they charge fees to a local pharmacy. Um, and oftentimes their prices won't, won't beat what a pharmacy would have offered to start with. Uh, and in most cases where I've seen them beat the price, they're usually uh, sort of uh, off as far as what's realistic in the market. Uh, oftentimes they're asking the pharmacy to take less than what they paid for the drug and then billing a fee on top of that. So, but we attempt to sort of keep tabs on what is sort of the market price on drugs. And then we attempt to discount that as steeply as we can to provide people without insurance an opportunity to, uh, you know, access their medicines. Uh, there are also a couple of other options out there. Uh, the Council on Aging for uh, various counties will, in some cases, assist patients who already have Medicare coverage, uh, specifically patients who may not qualify for what's known as extra help or subsidized copays. Uh, and so if you've got a patient who's on an expensive drug like an insulin or some other, maybe other injectable anti-diabetic drug, or maybe it's uh, a name brand blood thinner or something where there is no generic option uh, and they're having to fill a drug with a total spend of five, $600 a month or more, uh, we have seen programs like Senior Rx where they will sort of guide the patient through the resources that are available to insured patients who may not have the money to pay those copays, but still don't qualify for the subsidies that would lower their copays. So there are some other options out there. And then of course, what we'll attempt to do anytime it's possible is uh, if, if a patient is on a name brand drug or some other expensive dosage form where there's something that's virtually clinically equivalent that is much less expensive then we'll attempt to you know communicate with that prescriber to change them to something that's less expensive okay all very good info not good to know uh, i definitely did not know that about good rx but uh, <laughs> i did not know that at all but i'm glad that you guys work with families to ensure that they get their medications Okay. All right. So Josh, what about people that have trouble swallowing? Do you guys offer liquids or can some of the capsules be opened or pills be crushed? Short answer is yes. In, in a lot of cases, you can recommend either a, uh, you could recommend either a, a, an alternate dosage form. Uh, sometimes liquids will be commercially available. Um, we offer compounding to a degree at one of our locations, so there are times when you can change a patient from a solid dosage form to a compounded liquid form, or uh, sometimes you can open a capsule, sometimes you can crush a tablet. Usually, if a patient is in a condition, if, if, they're, if their condition is such that they're having difficulty swallowing, it's usually a caregiver that we're dealing with, so we'll 
try to offer the caregiver as many options as we can. Okay. And then um, is there like a main phone number for the pharmacy or what's the best way to contact you guys? Uh, so millspharmacies.com, that's with a C-I-E-S. So millspharmacies.com has a list of our locations. Usually what we recommend is uh, that anyone who's interested in contacting us, contact the location that's nearest to them because those are usually going to be the people who are taking care of them. Um, so that's the best bet is, uh, you know, look for a location that's near you and our telephone numbers are all listed on the website. We have 13 different locations. Okay. And then those locations, are they mostly in Jefferson County? Do you have some in like Tuscaloosa County or? Primarily Jefferson County. We have, uh, we have, I guess it's, uh, 11 around Jefferson County. We have one that's in Tuscaloosa County. Okay. And then our farthest one from Jefferson County is out in Greene County in Utah, Alabama. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time with us today. Thank y'all.